everybody. How y'all doing? Things are good here in LA. The weather's good. Uh, <clears throat> things are looking up, I have to say. This, this live stream today does have a theme, and it's going to be about note combinations. Something I want to kind of lay on you is something that, that uh, I just, I crave and I love. And that is when you find these magic rubs between two notes, three notes, four notes. It's just, when you go like this, and the distortion is just right. <laughs> well, I've got some delay on there too, so another guilty pleasure, but. <laughs> the way these things go over chords, it, to me, it's just magical. And, you know, you can you could go super long, super wide. <laughs> and do tenths, or you can get really close like this and just do, that's just one interval. And that's one of my favorites. I'm gonna show you something that I learned from Billy Gibbons, and it's this, I'll show you. <laughs> that's one of my favorite clusters, one of my favorite uh, double stops. Or you can do the really open ones, and these, like, these are really far apart. Now, another thing I want to show you today is, is even when the chord changes are really simple, I often make a chord chart so that I can kind of turn my mind off. This B minor to A right here, I really like to catch it. And I often catch it with a note cluster, which is what I'm talking about, two notes together. So let me show you. I'm going to demonstrate that. I'll try and, like, let you know when it happens. So it went from B minor to A, and I went with it. I love to follow that, particularly when I use open strings. Let me show you that. So what I'm talking about today is, and even I discovered something just a little while ago that's the simplest version of this. Check this out. That's an octave. So what I'm talking about is remembering that Two, two notes together is a pretty amazing thing. Three notes together, four notes together. Now let me just play one more time and then I'll start answer, answering some questions for you guys. Here we go. That, that actually had a bunch of stuff that I didn't expect to do in it and some pretty, I mean, you could play a whole chord. I mean, could, I'm talking about that too. So it's also but nice when you balance. So if you play a single, a single line and then go into these rubs. Keeps it kind of fresh. Hey, Fred. Hello from France. That's really nice. Hey, thanks. I appreciate. You. I really appreciate you guys too. Cleveland in the house. That's great. There's some German there too that I don't understand. Wish I did. Mm -hmm. 
So another thing I want to talk about is I'm really, really wild about this new thing that I learned from Jeff Mackerlane. And I probably could have learned it 20 years ago, but better late than never, where I'm, I'm using the bridge pickup, but I'm turning down the tone to about eight or seven. And it really, to me, it makes the bridge sound just right. Cause I always have, you know, if I turn it up to 10, it's just a little too bright and thin. If I turn it down to eight, it's just right. It sweetens up. Now I do like to have the neck with the tone full up. There's not a problem there, but I always felt like the bridge pickup was a little too bright. And Jeff taught me this. Yeah, you're asking about the four in lines. There's certain notes that just are magical to me. Let me demonstrate that because you just brought it up. Here I go. And you can milk that. Maybe not for that long, maybe half that long. Let's check it out. And here's a dissonant one. Of course, it helps to be in E minor, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, doing a lot of your work in E minor. Because another really, really strong component to this is the open string. Before I forget, we're doing a sale on the masterclass. 20% off. You still have the 14-day free trial, so... Uh, you still get to decide without paying for two weeks and check it out. So the link is below somewhere in the description, 20% off. Now, a lot of times when I do octaves, it's really nice to actually vibrato the notes. You can vibrato one note or two notes. It's almost good to leave the top note static and just vibrato the low note. Both are good too. Really, and you can do it up here, you can do it really, really kind of a drastic version. I think it's kind of emotional. Here's another favorite, check out this. This is a three note cluster. Another trick here is you have a distorted tone, but if it's the right kind of distorted tone where it's not too gained up, you just pick more lightly and it cleans up and you can really hear some of these harmonies nicely. And if you want to slam it really hard, You get that. Hey, Robbie, here's a question about modes. Well, sure. I mean, if, you, if you're in E minor pentatonic, okay? And let's say you just go up. One step in the scale each time, you can actually insert the modes everywhere. I made a mistake, but you see what I'm saying? Now that's not the most musical thing, 
Let me try and sneak that in in a way that's more musical. So that's my answer. That you know that reminds me of one of my main influences, which is Peter Frampton. Frampton comes alive. That's I, I mean I listened to that record one zillion times. <laughs> Tim, greetings from L.A. Greetings from Oregon. Yeah, cool. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, how sh that's that's a, that's great. That's a great question. Thanks, Phil. <clears throat> so, Adolfson, is that what am I saying that right? Um, just started learning last year. Started the master class. How long should I stay on a lesson? Tell totally clean or it's daily practice. My advice to you is stay on it until you hit a wall and then come back to it the next day. You never really have to do anything too much. I'd say variety is kind of the key. And over the course of a week, keep coming back to it and keep keep trying to push that wall to where you get better and better and better at it. But let it go. You know, I mean, it's like come back to it in a month. You know, I think... you circling around a number of different endeavors is is a really great way to stay interested and stay well-rounded and to learn stuff because when you when you apply yourself just a good night's sleep will actually get you further and if you apply yourself several times during the week uh, and come back to it uh, you'll come back to it with new skills just from the act of tension and release from being in the game and out of the game. I think, you know, try and it's not a day, it's not an hour. It's, it's a number of days and a number of weeks and a number of months and a number of years. And that's how you get good. So just keep circling around a number of different things. Keep attacking stuff from different, different directions. <laughs> So now I'm going to play a little more and see what pops out. Now that time I was really enjoying open strings. I mean, so it nothing sounds better than staying on one string and letting the other strings ring with it. <laughs> James wants to know, how much are you thinking as opposed to just going by feel when you solo? It's both. I, I, I think that you develop a vocabulary, and at a certain point, you're able to let your mind kind of relax, but you're always trying to pay attention to the chords and trying to craft something good and trying to play opposites against each other. So it, it, it will always be both. Let me play a little thinking on that concept. So 
so where I started thinking there was in that spot that I love where it goes from B minor to A. And I wanted to catch that. I always want to catch that change because I love it so much. Another B minor. It's that little turnaround. I'm gonna do it again. That time I didn't really catch it, so let me try again. That was a pretty direct version. Just B to A, but so I do, you balance. You know, it's, it's funny. If you decide not to think, then you should think as an opposite. I always try and go from opposite approaches all the time. Yeah, I love, I love doing drones. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me go after it again. That was a direct chordal approach. And in this particular composition, I love doing the low strings. Let me concentrate there for a second. But play low, go high. Always try and do opposites, one after the other. And on that B minor to A, I love making kind of kind of a suspended version of that. So if we have B minor, I love using the high E string. AJ is asking, do you have any tuning secrets or tips? To me, 440 sounds out on some strings, specifically the high E and B strings. Okay, guitar is never perfectly in tune. So that's the first thing you need to remember. And whatever you're playing to, you might have to make adjustments to bring the B chord a little, uh, the B note a little sharper or the E note a little sharper. So. <laughs> If I hear something that I don't exactly like, then I might temper the guitar and bring the, the open string up a little bit. That's the thing. If you expect perfection, uh, you're not going to get it. So you, it's temper. Everything's tempering. And every piece of music you play over has idiosyncrasies. So particularly like the third on a G chord. <laughs> You constantly have to adjust stuff depending on what you're doing and what you're playing over. So use your ears and remember that it never, ever, <laughs> it never, ever is a problem that's totally solved. Everything is, it's tempering. It's, it's an, it's a, and that's the beauty of it. Some of the slightly out of tune things actually make it the most magical. When you close your eyes when playing, are you thinking of a chord progression or is it all about feel? Well, if I close my eyes, probably puts me in a little bit of a different emotional state. And that is what you want. Like you might want to, like if you're nervous when you're playing, you could actually use that and turn the nerves into a bit of an edge maybe. So, 
and then if you're actually closing your eyes, it might send you in a, into a slightly different emotional place. So all of this stuff you should kind of play with all the time. Let me try nervous and let me try, try my eyes closed. The way I made myself nervous was to try a really fast riff that I didn't want to blow, okay? So that creates some kind of tension that you like. And then if you balance that with closing your eyes and playing something dreamy, then the audience gets two different radical, you know, messages from you. Now, it was so very different. I mean, it, it was a really good thing that you brought up because closing my eyes, it was just, it was, it was a whole different zone. Really, really good point. But use them both. Use everything. Use anger. Use tension. Use relaxation. Everything you can think of. Superb sound on a live stream. Thank you so much. Yeah, this, we work really hard on this. We work really hard, really hard on the sound. I'm going through, pro, this is my studio rig that I'm going through. And, and this particular guitar, I'm using this Shanks ODS, which is a new pedal where he's pretty well cloned the Nobles ODR1. I'm going to do a video about this that'll be out next Saturday. Um, so I use, I use a really, really warm, overdrive pedal and then I go basically into an amp that's set pretty clean actually if I turn the overdrive off check this out this is pretty clean that's the amp sound and then the overdrive and then I have a little bit of darkened echo boy stereo delay so the delays you don't hear that well but that's the point for me delays need to be in the background and I want I want them I want them to create a float with the guitar and a dimension, but I don't want to hear trails. And then, like I said, what I'm playing with right now, and this is a really great sounding guitar. I mean, David Grissom spent 20 years developing this guitar, um, and it shows. It really sounds great. It's very touch sensitive. <laughs> And this trick that Jeff taught me of t turning down the treble on the bridge pickup really, really makes me love it. <laughs> it really does. So thanks for the sound. I mean, and then I have great microphones, great mic pre's. It's, you know, it's a, it really a lifetime of pursuit in getting things to sound good. Remind you of Boston? Well, that, that makes sense. Totally makes sense. Mr. Mooch, advice for losing your passion? Um... Just know that it happens to everyone, even the the best musicians in the world. Let's take Mateos for an uh, for uh, uh, an example. He actually, this is the most amazing, you know, guitar player in the world in some ways. And he, he I've seen him go through this where he gets completely frustrated and fed up. So I think that's the main thing you should remember that no matter what happens. This will, it, it, any any pursuit that's artistic, you will go dry. And then the way to get that back, I think it's just to find really simple things that you love and start again. You know, get that beginner's mind again and, and maybe go back to music that you love. Like I could go back to, you know, my favorite music from the 60s. If I got dry, you know, that's what I'd suggest. Go back to what, what bands did you love originally the most? Go back and start learning some of that stuff again, really simple stuff. And, and you'll get the passion back. But the main thing to remember is that it happens to everybody. And there's tons of writer's books out there about this. Any writer or artist it happens. It's just, it's a cycle and it keeps happening. Yeah, AJ, the tuning thing, it, remember it's tempering and certain chords. I used to do sessions where we'd have to tune one chord at a time to make everything perfectly in tune. It's never, never that easy. Buy another guitar, that's funny. I think it does have the TCI pickups in it. Um, oh, 
Any tips on lead playing that is in the pocket and really crisp time-wise? Should we count time for solos? I don't think you need to count time so much. I would just keep an awareness of, like you could do an exercise where where you you just try and pocket stuff crisply. Let me show you what that would sound like. So let me let me do this for you. One stab in time. Then a four note phrase in time. Really simple. And then some syncopation. So turn yourself into, you know, a beginner and play really really simply. In other words, kind of give up your, your role as a performer for a second and really, really try. Now, if, and also, if you're on a digital workstation, you can actually see it. You can see it right in front of you, where you're at, where you're at in time. So give up everything else and just work on time. And it's, it's really about the right hand. And certainly with rhythm, I keep the right hand going like a pendulum all the time. <laughs> Hope that helps. Oh yeah, live streams are great. I mean, every, everybody's doing them, and for me, it's just I feel really comfortable doing it, although I fumble over my words now and then. But this amp is my Park 45 100. Um, so I use the divided by 13 a lot, but this is a much louder amp and it's cleaner, and sometimes that's a better platform for soloing. For, for pedals, you know, having great pedals in front of it. Levi, how do you overcome nerves or fear when you play? You don't overcome it. You live with it. And I remember uh, we used to do shows in L.A. We, like when I was on the road, you travel all, all over the country. It was no big deal. And you come back to L.A. where you knew everybody and there might be some famous people in the audience and all that stuff. And I remember the first few songs getting up on the stage it was pretty nerve-wracking, and then you relax into it. It's one of those things you live with it and know that it can go away. One of the most nervous moments I've ever had was actually recently. A couple of years ago, I did the PRS Experience Festival. And think about this. I had to, Paul, for whatever reason, he put me on last, okay? So I had to stand there and watch the most amazing collection of guitar players play the most amazing performances one after the other, for three hours before I went on. And I just practiced and practiced and warmed up and I, I would try and breathe. But the time I got up there, I was more nervous than I've ever been in my life. And this was two years ago. What I did is I just played really slow. I didn't push myself. I didn't try anything really, you know, like wild. I tried to really kind of move my body in a relaxed way. I tried to pretend that I wasn't nervous. That's another thing. I always kind of, when I get on stage and I'm nervous, I kind of just kind of, you know, look like I'm relaxed and that helps too. This was a situation where I did three songs up there and the nerves never really went away. Usually the nerves go away. So recognize that nerves are something you pass through and they will probably go away within a few minutes. But in this particular particular performance, they never went away. And, but I made it through. And when I watched the film of it, I was I was so afraid to even watch the film of it. It was great. I mean, I was playing slow. That was one of my strategies was to play really slow so that I didn't crash and burn on anything because that would have made it worse. Uh, so the thing about nerves is you're the only person experiencing it and the people who are watching or either working with, they don't know. So this is, this is an internal game. Live with it. Know that it's going to go away. But if it doesn't go away, most times if you, you know, find adaptations, don't do something too risky or too challenging. Uh, you could look back at a video of that performance and be really, really happy with it. Teddy Boy, yes, it is cramped behind this desk, and that's on purpose because this is designed for session work with you know producers and songwriters and artists, and it's designed, I've said it a million times, like an airplane cockpit. And so everything has to be within easy reach so I can move fast 
and it really works. The only thing that happens, guitars get dinged. So some of these guitars I've used in this cockpit for a long time, when I finally sell them, they're going to be pretty beat up. Any recommendations to get better at phrasing? Technique is so easy. Uh, first of all, simplify and know that dynamics is the key. Some notes need to be loud, some need to be soft. I'll demonstrate. First note was super loud, the next three notes were soft, the last note was super loud. So it's punctuation. So for phrasing, go super slow, play along with a song, with a drum beat, with a groove, so that you're keeping yourself honest and it's not just you in the air. And then use dynamics. Phrasing is about dynamics. Pick velocity. Now, if I played that without any, any concern for pick velocity, it would sound like that. And you don't want to sound like that. You want to have all of this gradation in your picking from soft to loud. So you get all this nuance. Take three note phrases and just milk them and milk them and milk them and go slow and, and you know, think of yourself like a vocalist. How great they are. Do you ever struggle with tone? One day the sound is great, then you come back the same sound the next day and the sound is totally wrong. There are always moments like that. And, and it, I think that's true for all of us. Um, I have learned that my ears respond differently even when I take a 15 minute break. And you're absolutely right. That's one thing, don't get frustrated by that because it's amazing how we emotionally respond to sounds and it happens to me all the time. Like, I'll think, oh, that was a great sound and then I go, I'll come back and sit down after get, getting a cup of coffee and I'll go, oh, it's way too bright and I'll adjust and adjust. So just know that this is part of the process and part of the fun too. It's like it never, any guitar player you talk to at any level of experience will tell you that it's this elusive thing that you're constantly trying to circle around and get back to. So yeah, it happens, happens to all of us. How thick are the picks you use? I really, for soloing, I like to use this Dunlop sharp heavy pick. Um, for rhythm sounds, you know, I like to use medium picks that are not like this, but I've settled on this just because of the accuracy of it. It's, it's kind of crazy, but this really sharp and it's a thick one I think it's 1.14 you know last of the four horsemen that's a good title do you ever use combo amps or strictly heads and cabinets I I've always done heads and cabinets just because I I like being in the control room in an environment where I can control the sound, these cabinets I have on are jet engine loud. So they're out in the other room. Now, the reason I don't use combo amps is in order to turn up or down the treble, I just reach over here. If I had to go to another room to turn up and down the treble, that would throw my game off. So this is the thing, when you're working and making music, you can't have anything throw your game off. Now, I know guitar players who are very willing to go out into the, the, the tracking room and adjust their AC30 combo. And, but for me, it was always about speed and momentum and flow. And so I always like to have everything separate and I like to be able to control the volume. This is, you know, th these amps are too loud to listen to. The, the great tones are, you know, through cabinets that are too loud to listen to, yeah. What's the best way to sound melodic? There's one good trick, stay on one string. And then break away from it and be non-melodic. And then go back to one string. That's a way to get you into melody. And then you can break that rule and go to two strings. But even, even playing three notes on one string, four notes on one string will get you more melodic. You really have no choice. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Well, guys, I'm going to play a little more, maybe answer a couple of questions. Here we go. something I can talk about. Repetition is sometimes great. Uh, you don't want to overdo it, but that was three phrases in a row that had the same cadence. They also had some really nice rubs. I mean, I'll be playing an E minor for the rest of my life because these, you know, the open strings, check this out. I think sometimes more than three times in a row with repetition is wrong. I think that's pr a pretty good general real, uh, ro uh, <laughs> rule. <laughs> Twice is okay for repetition, but three times is kind of maybe the perfect thing to use when you're repeating a phrase. Four is probably too much. <laughs> Kind of a good question about the pick flexing when you play a fast phrase. That's actually true for me. I, I want I want the pick to flex when I'm playing rhythm and but when I'm playing lead, I don't want any flex because I want the accuracy. I want to be able to choose and play as fast as I can with nothing giving. What's a word of advice that you feel people need to hear today? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's so big. I don't know. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. And if you're an artist, realize that you never reach your destination. It's always, you're always on the way there. I mean, certainly after 40 years, I feel like I'm just getting started on this thing in some ways. Yeah, one more time I want to mention before we sign off, uh, we're, we're doing a sale on the masterclass right now. And you still have the two week free trial. So if you, if you, if you sign up, uh, you can st still decide within two weeks that you don't want to be there. So it's pretty risk free, but it's going on right now. You just have to click this link that's in the description. A couple more questions and I'll play us on out of here. Oh man, I'm so glad you like Toy Matinee and Guitarland. Um, I still am very proud of both those records. I could actually listen to some of Guitarland uh, right now uh, and and go, gosh, that's some of my best playing I've ever done. I mean, I really, I really could. Um, be careful about the glass very close to the headstock. You know, it's not. It's an optical illusion. But I should be careful because I don't want to spill that. So thank you. I will be careful. How about metal picks? I don't really use them, but I, it would be a good thing. I should. I should try a metal pick. That would be, that'd be great. So guys, I'm going to do, we're at about 40 minutes, and that's usually the, the, the good length for these, but I'm going to keep doing them. So we'll, we'll, we will do this again. And I, I appreciate all of you so much for, for, for coming. And uh, I, I was able to answer a lot of questions today. It was really fun. I love answering questions. So thanks for, for offering them, and and thanks for all your support. I'm going to play out, and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time. God, the time just went so, so fast. All right, guys, here we go.